Hi, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Hope you're all safe and feeling healthy. I just want to give you a quick heads up. This episode of the podcast was recorded weeks and weeks ago, um, before a lot of things in the world have happened. Um, maybe most notably the tragic murder of George Floyd and all of the events that have followed that. Um, We've talked about some of these things on the podcast uh, in the last couple episodes, um, but Beza and I felt that as important as it is to talk about all these really heavy subjects, it's also important to be able to rest and recharge, and if you can, have a laugh and, and try to alleviate some tension. So we're putting out a couple interviews that we recorded uh, with some close friends over the next couple weeks. Um, this is one of them. Uh, it's a silly interview it's a fun time it's it's really just a long conversation about pixar with our good buddy and uh we hope you enjoy it and again yeah that's pretty much all i have to say i hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and we will be continuing to put out more content soon take care guys welcome back uh another episode of the cook and the coach podcast i'm beza i'm the cook and I'm Kenny. <laughs> you said cook. <laughs> I said two weeks in a row. God damn it. I said, I said two or three weeks in a row. I said I'm the cook. Yeah, you have. No, nah, I'm not the cook. I'm the coach. <laughs> and I'm Kenny. I'm the cook. Welcome, everybody, to the Cook and Coach podcast. Welcome. Glad you're listening. Our guest today is uh, our really good friend, our brother. We love him very dearly. Mm-hmm. Um, fellow Pixar fan, fellow fan of entertainment, uh, David Paulson, uh, our best buddy from – from uh, North Heights back in the day when we were little kids and um, we went to high school together. Uh, Kenny went to college with them. You were actually roommates with them in college. Yep. yep. And then we were all roommates in a house just uh, about a year, year and a half ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, our best friend, our beloved brother, David. Oh, random barbecue thing. I was uh, on the truck this weekend and yeah. um, uh, my chef was like, Man, I really want to take that uh, that Franklin Barbecue Masterclass, and I was like, "Bro," <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> "He's like, did you have that food?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "You <laughs> son of a bitch!" <laughs> he was so angry that I'd That's had. Hilarious. I was, and it's like, dude, it's everything you hope it will be. Like, it's yeah. the best. Yeah. Oh, I had that uh, that bow and tiger bite sauce or whatever. That was so good. Oh, you liked it? Oh, good. It, yeah, the sauce was like, I didn't expect it to be that cilantro-y, mm-hmm. but like, it was really good though, overall. Nice. Yeah, the sauce, we switch up regularly. Tiger Bite, by the way, oh, for sure. people watching, listening, is you can get the recipe for it on Bon Appetit if you want to make it at home. Uh, it's really good. It's just like a lot of uh, a lot of heat, a lot of greens all mixed together. Um, but yeah, it's like, I was so impressed. We uh, We deep fried one. To see like how it was, oh, really? I didn't try it, but everyone else on the truck was like, "This is amazing." I'm like, "Would it be sacrilege to take Mama Vang's bao recipe and then just deep fry it?" I don't it's know if we can do that. It's interesting too with like deep frying that because like it was it had more like I don't know breading than I thought. Yeah. Like when I cut into it, I was assuming like it'd be like thinner. But, yep. like, you could still deep fry it and get, like, the crusty outside and then still have, like, some breading left over on the inside. I think it'd be good. Yeah. It was it was pretty strange. It looked like um, like a cinnamon roll or something when we stopped, <laughs> <laughs> like, frying it. But filled with meats. <laughs> with, with the meats. Bays, yeah. It's, uh, uh, Mama Vang is, like, the, the mother of Chef Yia Vang. And that's where some of the recipes that the food uh. truck come from. And uh, so she actually sometimes makes some of the food that we sell on the truck. So like, um, or at least comes up with the recipe. So like the bows, like she literally made like dozens and dozens of them, like two days in a row that we were just like whipping out and selling on the truck. And they were amazing. Like, so the bow that she makes is like. Steal some. I don't know, like seven inches, eight inches big, like in diameter maybe. Sizable. I had like one for dinner and I was like, it was a. It was like a main course. Wait, sure. really? Yeah, they're yeah. they're big. They well, so they have like um, pork on the inside, and then I think um, a rice noodle. I think like a thin. I think it was a rice noodle. Mm. Yeah, um, it's enjoyed. And then like a hard boiled egg, and then yeah, if you when you break it up, you can put like a hot sauce in there, and it's 
freaking fire. Did Kari like it? Yeah. Yeah, she nice. did. Nice, dude. Did you, uh, were you saying you watched Onward last night? <laughs> a, a second yeah. time? Give it the yeah. old rewatch. I Love watched it. that. And then I watched uh, Good Dinosaur because <laughs> I had been, I hadn't seen it yet. And it was like, it was time for me to watch it. So, oh, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that impressed, but I was happy to see it. Sure. That's, I didn't realize that you hadn't seen it until now. Is that so? Have you now watched all of the Pixar movies that have been released? I'm boycotting Cars 3 because <laughs> Still. Cars 2 is such an embarrassment and such just like a merchandise grab. That yeah, like, really I went was. to go and see Cars 2 in theaters and it was like mistake number one, first <laughs> off. And then, like, I watched it, and it was just, like, the worst Pixar movie I'd ever seen. So then I was like, Real I'm not going to go and see Cars 3. Unless it's, like, everyone's like, you need to. And then everyone was like, no, it sucks. I think I saw Cars 2 in a theater as well. Did we see it together? <laughs> we may have. <laughs> I think we probably... I, I, I have a vague memory of us three being in Cars 2 together. That's very real. Probably at, like, a matinee at the Roseville AMC. <laughs> yeah. A little free pub for you guys, Roseville AMC. Roseville AMC. Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, that one is so bad. It's just the worst. Mater being the main character. It's yeah, like, what are we doing, guys? Like, and then on top of that, they were doing like all of those spin-off shows at the time. And it was just, yeah. It was oh, impressive. yeah. They were doing Planes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was garbage. Oh, it. Uh, you're right, though. It definitely was a merchandise grab. Say, though, like, cars 3? Cars. Right on Cars 2. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was better, but it wasn't great. It was... No. No. It was, eh. it was like, we could have had cars and then just left it at that, and we didn't need any of the other have. stuff. Yeah. So, Dave, upon watching Onward for the second time, uh, yes. what, what, how do you feel about it? Because we all have strong opinions about Pixar movies. We all have the hierarchy. We grew right. up with them. Right. I would say it's like... It's in the bottom half. I wasn't like a huge fan of it. Second half, I didn't like it. Or like second time, I wasn't like more impressed. I was kind of hoping that I would like catch new things, see new things. I don't know. I didn't think like the story was slightly original, like, but not like shockingly like some of the other Pixar movies have been. Um, I didn't think the film score like the music and everything that they put in was like was super mind-blowing or anything like that chris pratt and tom holland did a good job um but overall yes it was fine it just wasn't like great on par with some of the other pixar originals that they've done like i thought coco was better thought uh inside out was better in terms of like the more recent ones but it was yeah. okay yeah, I kind of I need to watch it a second time. I I watched it with my family a few weeks ago, and my little sister Nelly was crying during it, so she really liked it. Um, like she really had a good time. Is that par for the? Is that par for just any no, movie? No, she doesn't. No, actually... she doesn't cry a lot at movies. So I was like, sometimes wow. I wonder, like if, like, because I agree, I didn't have the best time watching Onward, but sometimes I wonder, like if part of the way that I enjoyed those movies is like a vortex that's closing behind me and like, I can't get back and sure. get to that, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I watched monsters Inc for the well, first Ken. time now, if I would enjoy it as much, you know? Sure. If it well, would. Ken, I don't know if that's true because remember we talked about frozen on this show mm -hmm. and how we were so enamored by it and how we felt like we were young kids again. So that's I don't think that, that vortex is closed. But I think what I think, um, how do I say this? I it's think narrowed. you're allowing yourself to consume. Yeah, it's narrowed. It's not closed. It's just narrowed. Like mm. the only stuff that really, really hits is going to take towards you. That stuff is kind of on the fringes, like this movie was. Yeah, I feel that. Base, how, what did you think about it? Um, similar to Dave. Um, to me, it was like a middle of the pack Pixar movie. Not bad, but not yeah. great. Um, to me, it was just like a little bit better than Coco. Mm. But not, not that much better. Um, Chris Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, they had really good chemistry together. I mean, mm -hmm. you could tell just by, you know, obviously they were Avengers together, but they had great chemistry. 
Um, I thought the story was a good idea. I had a really original take. But um, I don't know. Like, I really enjoyed it at the beginning. And then towards the middle, it was kind of like, meh. I got a little bit better at the end. I liked the ending. Like, the ending was, like, warming and heartfelt. It was like, oh, that's nice. But then it was just like, at, when the movie was over, I had no desire to see it again. I only mm. saw it that one time. I have no desire to go back and rewatch it. Mm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have rewatched it, it part, if it wasn't for. I have no for... desire to watch again. Yeah, mm. I wouldn't have rewatched it if it wasn't for the pod. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like what kind of bothered me about it, like I liked there were some really kind of original ideas, like being able to bring your dad back for a day, and like some of like the magic stuff was kind of unique that I felt Pixar-y. and then weirdly, mm-hmm. like other things felt like s uh, 2019 like cliche like like moments they battle like a huge monster at the end of the movie Mm -hmm. and that felt like so many marvel movies and like disney movies and like dreamworks movies like it feels like like so many movies you have to battle some enormous monster at the end of it and i was like why are we do you didn't need to do this this is weird (laughs) it did come out and like that's how I felt about Coco. Coco felt like a musical to me, but that's how that's not what Pixar does though. So why would you try to do so much music into this movie? I mean, and I asked how I felt with the end of the movie. It felt like too grand, too big of like a Disney film, not like a Pixar film where it's these simple characters in this human like situation. And they have to get through it somehow. You know what I mean? I felt yeah. like too weird. Well, it didn't yeah. feel that intense. Like I was like, I've been more in of like freaked out and more like on the edge with like Woody and the gang being about to be pushed into like a dumpster by like toys with a truck coming and they had like these huge monsters battling with spells and I was like I'm not as engaged I'm not as into this yeah and yeah I feel like I don't know I go back and forth because on one hand it's like the whole premise is that like the magic is gone and in like this time frame in which it's supposed to be happening like every fairy tale story like that has a monster but Mm -hmm. on the other hand they definitely could have done without it given all of the other stuff that they had already had like i don't know the indiana jones style like traps or what have you so julia louis dreyfus in another pixar movie too by the way like from princess anna yeah Yeah. (laughs) to this like that's pretty wild Mm mm-hmm yeah, I was reading. I didn't realize that there was a actor that's been in every Pixar movie. You didn't know that? I'm shocked. The John. I, know, I knew that he had been in like. I knew that he had been in like a ton. Bro, like you know, he's been in so many. I just didn't realize that it was like mm-hmm. every single one. Guy. Yeah, John Ratzenberger is is the guy's name, and he is yeah. every single one. Um, that's so nuts. Yeah, it's crazy, right? He, I didn't. I don't know if I remember what a hearing life. him in this one. What, what a, a life. life. That's Yeah, he is like he has like two lines. He's like a construction worker. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Corona gets him, then this is all just a simulation and life is meaningless. There's the line. Yeah. There's the... <laughs> Take anyone. <laughs> Take anyone. But John Rasenberger. <laughs> Uh, I would be crushed though. I would I would shed a tear. One other thing that I was gonna say was I heard that um, the both like the director of it and the people that did like the film score or whatever, mm-hmm. both of them had like lost their dads at young ages. Oh really? Yeah. So that's wow. why it was I don't know like super personal and stuff for them. That's really nice. That's yeah. that's like very heartfelt. I. So, I yeah, mean, I, was like, I can't it, imagine having to work on something like that oh. and have it be like partially your story. Dude, well, now that I'm thinking about it, Good Dinosaur is also about losing your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> Even though it's not a good movie. Also about no. that. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah, I did like, what did you think about the ending of, uh, of Onward? Of onward um i don't know it was it was like satisfying but not i don't know i wasn't like thrilled with it mm. yeah i, I thought it was i it thought was, it was kind of sweet it wasn't yeah. hitting me quite how i was hoping it would but i was like 
once it, I realized that he might not mean it, I was like, please don't have a moment where he talks with the brother and then somehow he can talk with the dad. Like, have it be this moment. Don't, like, cheat yeah. later. Yeah. In some ways, it was, I don't know. I like the fact that he wasn't ever able to talk to him. That was kind of a good twist. It was mm-hmm. just hard that you could see that coming from so mm-hmm. far away. <laughs> I guess so. I wasn't sure if... I feel like you are always trying to figure out how the movie's going to end. <laughs> I feel like that's that how you watch movies. Because <laughs> you're out, you and Kari both, you guys will both be like, oh yeah, I totally saw that coming. I'm like, how? <laughs> are you watching the movie or doing like storyboard math? <laughs> Calculations. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, this line increases the probability. Of this, of this and that. <laughs> but okay, so wrapping up on Onward. You wouldn't see it again. <laughs> you watched it last night for the last time. <laughs> yeah, don't need to do it again. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's on par with like Brave. Where exactly it's just is a like, lie. Probably, probably like right around, so what, there's like 22, 20-ish Pixar movies. Something like that, yeah. 23. It's probably like 13 or 14. Mm, okay. Middle of the pack. Okay. That kind of leaves a lot of movies, though. That's interesting. There's, there'd be a lot that would be underneath. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's but I, I mean, put like, it too. I have that same area too. Yeah. I guess I it mean, does like, kind of get close. Like, there's some. There's like a big drop off with a couple, and then a lot of the other ones are. Exactly. Also. You got the Cars movies at the bottom, just way below anything. Good Dinosaur is down there. So. Yep. Would you say, what are your thoughts on this? So the director was involved in Monsters University. Would you say that you liked Monsters University better than this? Uh, no. They'd be, they would probably be pretty close if Monsters University was original. But mm-hmm. I love Monsters, Inc. so much. And mm-hmm. Monsters, you just wasn't necessary. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was kind of a fun idea. But I yeah. don't know. It just like... Because Onward's original, I like bump it up a little bit more. That's that's my rule of thumb too. It'll be like if it's as long as they tried a new idea and just didn't go the easier sequel route, I, I give more yeah. points for that. I yeah. think that's probably why Coco is lands up higher for me too. Agreed. Yeah. So I'm I'm really curious. What are your thoughts on Good Dinosaur then? Because everyone in my family hates it. <laughs> yeah, I just go. Think I'm was... ready for this conversation. <laughs> I didn't think it was good. I wasn't that impressed. Everyone talked about how good the, um, how good like the aesthetics of the movie were, and I wasn't that blown away by them compared to other Pixar movies. Like it was good, but compared to the top aesthetic movies like Finding Nemo, I thought Coco looked super good. Mm. Things like that, I didn't think Good Dinosaur was that good. The, I would say the main thing was at the end, I hated a couple things. And it's like the main part of the movie. But he makes his mark and he literally didn't do anything. He did <laughs> nothing to earn it. He just messed up, fell into a river, and then made his way back. Meanwhile, his mom and his brother and sister are out there laboring trying to avoid starving to death. Realistically, they're probably hoping that he's not coming back because now they have another mouth to feed that they weren't planning for. Uh, not only that, when he puts his mark, he puts it above his brothers and sisters. His is on par with his mom and his dad. And he did nothing. Ah, That's so funny. That's I funny. feel the same exact way about the movie. Aesthetics... We're okay, not great. I feel like the ending there was it was built through climax and nothing at all happened. I mean it was original story, but I mean it didn't make me feel anything whatsoever. By yeah. far to me the worst Pixar movie ever made. Not even close. You think that's worse Wait, than what? like Cars Two? And here's and here here's why. Here's why. The same reason we give props to for Pixar movies having an original idea, even though they're not good. We still place it up above like certain movies because they're good ideas. Same thing with same thing with they're bad. If they're really really bad or rich idea, you got to pull them lower, right? I, mean, I, think I don't that, think so. But like I if don't... you like you said, let me let me explain. So we get onward 
uh, more props there too, right? At least Onward's um, original idea, there was something going there. But by that same merit, if it's a really, really bad original idea, that put even lower. That's my view of it. Does that make so sense? You, so you look at the original story idea as like whatever if it's good you give it more momentum for good if it's bad you give it more momentum for bad and you give more momentum because it's Bingo. original interesting so i go regardless i give it more momentum up for good because they tried something original Not agreed more. because i want to see more original ideas than i do sequels right and so for sequels i err towards the side of like being Fair. harder on it that's interesting, though, that you just sort of like, whatever reaction I'm going to have, it's going to be stronger. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Good Dinosaur was freaking weird, man. They had that scene where the kid and the dinosaur get high together, and they take psychedelics. Do you remember that? No. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, they eat, like, the fermented fruit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. they have a hangover at the end. Yes. That part it's... was very, it's so unnecessary. Because like yeah. if you're an adult, you're not thinking it's that funny. And if you're a kid, you're just wildly confused. Yeah. Can we agree on this? Is The Good Dinosaur the worst original idea at Pixar? I think so. You're not the worst movie. Yeah, I think. The worst I think original right. idea. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I okay. I think the same uh, person, people that did the music for Onward did it for A Good Dinosaur as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Strange. Mm-hmm. Um, what was, I was just thinking something that bothered me so much about it. I, I love that you were saying that, though, about how he didn't earn anything. <laughs> he just, his dad died. His parents are working. Oh, I remember. So when he comes home at the end, and he's, like, walking out up the horizon, and his mom's, like, he says the na- she says the name of her husband, and then squints, and then it's yeah. his, her son. That part, I hate that. I hated it largely for the reason that it doesn't look like he grew at all. <laughs> so he's still like by far the smallest <laughs> person in the group. So there's no way that they could be confused because his dad was huge and he's tiny. I don't know. Yeah, I hated that part too. Hey, Arlo, you, it's time for you to make your mark. <laughs> You're me and more. I thought that was the dumbest line. <laughs> You're me and more? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. It sounds like he misspoke. You're me and more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <I'll>... Enunciate. <laughs> As he's, he's drowning. <laughs> oh, no. yeah i didn't feel like it was a good i never understood totally the premise of it i guess and i didn't think the execution was good (laughs) so a a straightforward but brutal assessment (laughs) other than that loved it (laughs) didn't didn't get the premise and didn't like how it was executed (laughs) I also couldn't figure out why the human was so dog-like. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. He really was. That, that made no sense. I didn't uh, understand. I think it was supposed all. to be, so you could be like, oh, so Arlo's like the person and the human's the dog. <laughs> oh, life is beautiful. And I never would have gotten that if the human wasn't like, kicking its leg when they got scratched or anything so Urinating or barking or howling right does the human does somebody get caught under a rock at one point does that happen or am i imagining something else arlo gets caught under a rock and oh, the human digs him out that's right that could have gotten dark there's that <laughs> she says that like, 127 hours stuff yes what if that's where the movie stopped and he just puts his mark on the rock and then dies oh how sweet would that be but his mark is with like his stump of an arm (laughs) that would be a Pixar movie (laughs) see that would uh, that i would respect i like that way more that would make me feel 
Yeah, yeah it would make me feel. Also, remember the human family that adopts him? Yeah. That's just kind of strange, too. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I will say they did uh, nature pretty well. I, I In terms of, like, visuals, I did like how they did the nature. Like, uh, like the running water and, like, the different soil and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. But, I don't know. But the weird thing, though, it is that, like, the characters look too cartoony. The movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, is that I feel like the only other times that we get those, like, huge, expansive nature shots are in more commonly, like, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, things like that. And the bar is just so much higher. When I was putting on this shirt today and thinking, getting ready for the pod, I was like, because this is a shirt that when I put it on, I feel a little bit like Jeff Goldblum. And I was like, um, I was like, I can't believe that Jeff Goldblum hasn't done a Pixar character yet. Mm, Yeah. I think he'd be great at that. No, for sure. Yeah, he would. His voice is so good. I wonder, I'm sure he's been offered. Uh, You think so? Maybe. I don't know. I just feel like there's been so many... I don't know. They get so many just massive names and he has such a unique voice that it would be surprising if he hasn't, but I don't yeah. know. I feel like he's got to do it. He's had also, this is like the perfect time because he's like in his, his, la- his later years, but he's having another <laughs> renaissance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, he, could, he could be great. If you could replace a Pixar character with Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> who would you replace? <laughs> It's a great question. Um, hmm. Let me, I, here, I'm going to pull up the list because I'm totally stumped with that question, actually. I feel like he could have maybe done a character in Toy Story, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is kind of a lame one, but I, I think he could have pulled it off. You remember in WALL-E how they, ha- they watched those videos well, maybe this doesn't mm. count because that's an actual person. But they cut to like the actual humans saying like, hey, oh, yeah. welcome to that. I could see him doing that pretty oh. well. Um, I got it. Who? Rex. <laughs> he could story. be Rex. That could be decent. I could kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard because I don't want to like be blasphemous with some of these, but I'm just like... <laughs> Like if if he was Linguini from Ratatouille, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Or if he was Flick. Ooh, Flick's a good one. He could have done Flick. Yeah, I think he could have done yeah, yeah, great yeah. Flick. Yeah, that's. I think, I think so that's too. the one. That would be so. Are there other? Can you guys think of other people that you would love to see voice a Pixar character, but they haven't yet? They need to, like, like famous people. Uh, sure. Oh, you know what? You know what's a really weird one, but it's popped in my head. Um, Keenan from SNL. Ooh. Mm. I could see that. I mean, he's he's like a legend. He's been on that show longer than anybody. Dave, do you have any? Um, I don't know. It could be athletes. It could be comedians, actors. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart could be good. I but he also too he's much. done. He's he would it would have to you know what it would only work if it was a more serious thing for him where he was funny but it, he was more serious. Yeah. Cuz he he did like the rabbit right in in Life of Pets and that's just like yeah. all energy. So yeah. he would have to do something different to be like Pixar worthy. Right. I feel like James Spader would be an interesting one. Mm. Um mm. cuz like I don't know he kind of got into it a little bit with the um or the voiceover stuff with when he was, what's his face? Ultron, right? Mm-hmm. I don't do you, know. Do you think someone like Cardi B could do it? <laughs> with just... I don't want to find out. <laughs> you have to be a very specific role. A very specific role. <laughs> you have to be so specific. I thought of, off the top of my head, um, also SNL, uh, Melissa Villasenor. Melissa Villasenor. Ooh. The one that's all the... Yeah. She was in one. She was. She'd be really, I think. She was. Which one? She here. Let me look. I think Which she was one? Toy Story three. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I'm googling it right now. I'm pretty sure because she, she was at. Was, bro. There's pictures of her at the premiere of Toy Story four. 
Don't mean she did it. Let me see. Hold on. That'd be kind of weird if she didn't. Yeah, like why would she be there? Um, I might be wrong though. Let me look. Cast and crew. Okay. Was uh she was she was, uh she played Karen Beverly, in Toy oh, Story Four. Who is that? I don't remember who that is. I don't know. I don't remember who that is either. Huh. Well, she was in it though. That's cool. Bill Hader did one. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be solid. I wonder if his voice. He's. I think we like his voice because he's an attractive guy. And I actually think when I've heard people do impressions of him, his voice is kind of high and a little bit weird. And I don't know if he <laughs> if it would sound good. I don't think it's that high. <laughs> have you heard uh, – who's the guy who – have you heard Jamie Foxx do the Robert Downey Jr. impression? No. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> I have heard it. It's good. He did it on Comedians and Cars, and it's freaking hilarious. What would you guys say is your favorite – all-time favorite Pixar movie ever? The movie Men's Monsters uh, I don't think it's I don't know if it's the best Pixar movie ever, but it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's a question. Are you asking best or favorite? Your favorite. Mine is honestly mine's Pix uh, mine's uh, uh The Incredibles. I I hate this I don't hate to say it, but I know a lot of people are gonna strongly disagree with me, but brave. You really stick with brave. I'm. I, that's your that's favorite. Story. How much of that is because of its relevance to the Pixar Pixar universe theory? Because I know you're a huge fan. <laughs> True. Oh, I mean, it's definitely part of it. Definitely part of it. But I wouldn't say, even with that, regardless, it's still up there for me. You know. Wow. I don't. Know. I don't think it's. The, <laughs> I don't think it. I don't think it's the best Pixar movie. But it's my personal favorite one. Mm. I just don't think it's that original of a story. I can see, like, when I think of original, I think only Pixar could do this and pull it off. I think that Brave, a lot of people could have done that and pulled it off. Mm. Yeah, That's like, it's, it's an original story. I like some of the music in it. Yeah, um, the, I I have I have gone back and watched it before, and it's it's grown on me a little bit, but I just don't think it's the best. But that is, that's fascinating, actually. What do you think the best Pixar movie is? <sighs> Toy Story Two, not even close. Everything else is a, it washes away. Toy Story Two, huh? That's Toy Story uh, Two is incredible. Oh, you know, it's you know, really, say, really good. Toy, I say Toy Story Two, and like one B for me. I thought about this a lot, and to me, it's the most one of the most underrated movies of our time. Inside Out. Mm -hmm. Inside Out was really good. I think Inside Out is terrific. It's I think that might have been the best original uh, Pixar movie that they've come out with in years and years and years. Yeah, I think it's one of the best original screenplays in Hollywood in a very long time. Bill Hader is in that one too. I f I forget that he was mm -hmm. he did that. He was so good in that. Yeah. Speaking of, how do you guys feel about uh, Soul then? Because that's like, seems to be right along that same thing. Yeah, it seemed, I was confused. Almost too much. Yeah, it looks like, like similar character design. Like it was like colorway stuff. Yeah. I'm actually really excited for it and here's why. I think, well, here's two main reasons, right? So going to Inside Out, I extremely look expectations. I thought it was going to be trouble. And then Inside Out just said nope and blew me out of the water and it was amazing. So I have already have, I have low expectations for Soul. So I think they'll probably exceed my expectations. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But on the other flip side of that is I think Coco they did too much music. I think that was the main complaint about Coco was that there was so much like a musical. I feel like they'll kind of find a good medium balance. They'll have like one or two songs, but it's still going to be like a Pixar movie. It's not going to feel like a musical like I did with Coco. So they're going to find a good balance. I think it'll be good from that standpoint. I can see that. John Baptiste is one of the music composers for the movie I'm looking right now. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. Tina Fey is one of the people who has worked on the screenplay. 
So See, that's my both thing promising. For, Love JFA. for Soul is that my expectations is higher since Inside Out was so good. Mm. Because I'm like, it's got to right. be that much better and that much more original to differentiate it. Because if it's like the same or worse, I'm just going to be confused as to why they ever made it. Mm. That's that's totally right. fair. If it's like not different enough. I'm very curious the direction they go to because like soul is like a very religious thing or can be. And so I'm really like as a word, like you could do the music version or you could do the religious thing. And I could see like, yeah, I could see like KTIS getting angry about <laughs> <laughs> about soul <laughs> you know uh, for sure for sure <laughs> i didn't get that vibe from the trailer but yeah i could see it going that way we should watch it though and then dave if you want you can come back on and we'll talk about soul and discuss yeah, our thoughts on be, that that would be a good time let's do it i'm i'm very curious though because you're so jamie fox is the main person oh david diggs is in there He's the guy from Hamilton and then Tina Fey. Interesting. Quest Love. Actually? Yeah, he's on the cast list. Wait, what? Oh really? my god, you're right. Whoa. Oh, and there he is, the legend himself. He looks John Ratzenberger looks like a mutant chipmunk. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you can see it. He looks like a chipmunk that turned into a human and then turned evil. <laughs> those eyebrows are just those. That's like resting. They're so angled. Villain face. Yeah, he's These one are... of the few people who can still pull off a goatee. Yeah, goatee. It's not. It's not that many. You're right. You're right. Well, we've been going for a bit. Um, do we have any closing thoughts? <laughs> On the what Pixar is, universe. What is the future of the Pixar universe? I mean, I, mean, I think Soul is next. On everything with, well, obviously, but like with Corona happening, with movie theaters potentially being shut down, with AMC probably going out of business. Like, I don't know if we can expect the same quality from Pixar because the part of the reason why you want, why you want to see Pixar movies because it's an in movie in theater experience is what you want to go see a Pixar movie in, right? Like, you could see no, it from home. I disagree. But it's not the I same. Disagree. I disagree. Really? I don't think that most Pixar movies are, like, made that much better by by seeing in theaters. Granted, you're much more of a theater guy than I am. You love the but, theater base. I love the, the theater. I love it. I don't think that the scale... For certain movies, Bugs Life, Nemo... Maybe Incredibles because it's got the superhero idea. But I don't know. I saw, uh, I didn't see Onward in theaters, and I don't think that it would have made like a huge difference. I don't think Inside Out. I don't know. A lot of them, I didn't, I didn't get the vibe that I was needing to see it in theaters. Yeah, it's not generally like a super grand scale or like something so amazing. It only looks that way. Like shot with a special camera for this version of the movie, you know, or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I think, to me, I think the best experience for Inside Out is in the theater. Remember seeing the theater and like her, like being like in the like the crater or like the the, the whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. like yeah, in the trenches. Yeah, but you just about every that movie. feeling in the theater. No, not every movie. Like for example, I think what movie was it? I was just thinking about it. Crap. I don't know, but like, like for example, <laughs> I don't know. And a stupid some, some movie. <laughs> some like movies. Ratatouille, Ratatouille. I think you can watch it at home. You get the same feel, right? But I think movies but like Nemo. Movie. That's what I'm saying. I think there's some that won't make a big difference, but I think there's some that would make a huge difference. All right. I don't so, know. Just I just I don't know. AMC might go under. But I don't think theaters will cease to be. If anything, I feel like when people do get to go back to normal, people will want to be doing more things with people socially. So I feel like it'll boom again. Yeah. As well I as hope so. if you can do anything relatively virtually, 
I feel like, like Pixar movies have to be near the top. I mean, one, granted, they take so long to make even mm. like currently, because don't they take way longer than just like an average yeah. movie? Like, yeah, four like two plus years longer years. to make. Yeah. So I feel like that. But I mean, the voiceover stuff and all the camera work, I feel like you can do on a lot smaller scale. I definitely could be ignorant because I don't know really the process of it. I just feel like you could get away with doing it on a smaller scale because you don't need to have a massive set filled with extras mm. and things like that. But and honestly, honestly, this might become a better time for animators because if people have to work remotely for a while, like you could be doing at least some of your animation work like on your computers, you know? I mean, at least in yeah. theory, like if yeah. you had really great computers at your ho like house or whatever. Right, definitely. Like, about... Honestly, what if there's like a boom of more animated like shorts and films like because of this? That'd be really cool. That'd be dope. The type of person that I, at least I imagine gets super into voice acting them after six months of isolation and corona is going to come out with a hundred new voices <laughs> dude you're so right that's Our hilarious ratzenberger or whatever his name is is going to come out of this <laughs> and be ready to go another 65 years of pixar Holy, dude he will be revitalized 100%. melissa yeah. villasenor was discovered on america's got talent and she would say like, yeah, I spend a lot of time in my room just listening to voices <laughs> and practicing. <laughs> Ken, that's, that's what you everyone's do. doing time. this. Ken, yeah. that's how you get on Pixar. You're right. I need to buy a mirror <laughs> and, and sit I'm in kidding. front of it. You think no, I'm, I'm kidding? I'm serious. I dude, you know I want to be in a Pixar movie. That'd I'm be so sad. fun. You got time now. Let's go. Literally, I just, if I had one line, an actual line of a character, like a credited character, the people that they cast for the main roles are so, they're legends. Yeah. The fact that mm -hmm. Questlove is playing a, like a supporting role in that movie, Questlove is arguably one of the greatest drummers of all time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's like amazing. Here's a question for you guys. What do you think is the future in terms of voice acting since way more people since it's more mainstream now you're getting people who are doing it that are already like a-list celebrities that they can throw on the trailer with a huge name as opposed to like the specialists that have just been doing it forever but don't really have any facial recognition it's a good question I, I feel think... like it might not change a ton with like the really big movies because you need like the box office draw and you want to mm -hmm. go hear the person you know. But I don't know, maybe you would get like more like, like I guess indie voiceover artists like coming through and just doing supporting stuff. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like for so long, those like smaller roles have been filled by these specialists. And maybe I just wasn't aware of who was doing them. But I feel like more and more, you look at cast lists and you're like, oh, like these really massive people like a quest love or someone like that is just taking this small role I yeah base what do you think i think it's gonna more and more of these a less b less actors coming in to do these uh, animated movies i think eventually i think it'll take a while but i think eventually we're gonna see uh pixar movies dreamwork movies even like marvel movies start getting nominated for like like real like Oscars, like real Golden Globes. Let's, let's be honest. The Oscars are for like the artsy fartsy, like you know, movies that are like indie films, not really indie films with like big budgets and stuff. Whereas you know, like movies that involve superheroes, movies that involve you know animation, and you know that are more so meant for like younger audiences but aren't taking it seriously. The thing is, get more and more of these bigger actors and bigger names to these movies. I think over time we'll see those movies have a place in like, you know, best picture, best, you know, supporting role, best, you know, actor, or actress. I think we'll see more and more of that happen in the next 10 to 20 years. That's what Maybe. I'm hoping for at least. I feel like Pixar has already been in those conversations, but yeah, like, at least action for a, movies for, haven't. For a smaller award, though, for a smaller award. So I'm talking about like the big, Didn't big awards. Didn't Nemo win? Didn't Finding Nemo at least win like best, uh, best music or something like that. I don't know. I don't know for sure, but 
I think it won Best Animated Film. Well, well, that's kind of weird, though, because, like, do you think that they would take out the animated film category and just have it be Best Film? Not necessarily. Because, I mean, you could, like, for example, we were talking last week with Abdi. We talked about how, like, yeah, it won Best Form Film, but also won Best Film. Right? Right. So I want to see the same thing happen with, with anime films. They could win Best Anime Film, but it could also win the whole lot, too. I could see that. That could be pretty awesome. Yeah, so I guess Finding Nemo, it won Best Animated Feature, was also nominated in three more, including Best Original screen pl- Screenplay. Wow. Right. That's crazy, yeah. actually. I could see that. I mean, it goes back to, like, I don't know, what's the future, which is a definitely a topic for a different time, but what's the future of the Oscars in general? You know? I mean... Yeah. Oh, we got to that. That's a whole other... Absolutely. I was going to say, not, yeah. <laughs> not to go into. We can't even go into it now. <laughs> Dude, this has been fun. Thank, I'm so this glad you sweet. did this, Ben. Yeah, Thanks for coming on, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, you want to plug anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dave, so. guys, for, for, for the listeners, for the listeners, Dave doesn't even let us follow him on Instagram. Yeah. So the chance of you guys following him on Instagram is not happening. It's not happening. You're looking the at account is set to private. Yeah, you're looking at <laughs> the modern day Ron Swanson. <laughs> Honestly, this was a big step for me. So this uh, was huge. Yes, thank you. All right, well, love you, bud. We'll talk to you. We'll we'll try to get you on again for when Soul comes out. We'll talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Dope. All right, all right. See you guys. See ya. See you, Dave. Guys, that was our episode reviewing Onward, and also talk about Pixar with our good friend Dave. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, guys, we have a lot more guests coming on in the future. We're excited for them all to come on. If you have any guests you want us to talk to or any subjects in general you guys want us to talk about on the show, uh, let us know. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at podcast, the cook and the coach. And then Twitter at the cook and the C1. I've updated that in weeks, but I will soon. Um, Ken, give me your socials. Uh, my social is on Instagram, uh, kpmartin2, K-P-M-A-R-T-I-N-2, and Hey Market Catering, which is my food page. Also, uh, my music, if you look up Kenny Martin Bucket List, pretty much on any streaming thing, you will you should be able to find it. So check that out, too. All right. Uh, guys, that's it for this week. We will see you next time. See you later.